For this session, we're going to go over slicing in Photoshop and uh, and seeing how we're going to actually put that in our HTML and CSS code. Now, this is a design that I've already uh, created in Photoshop, um, and I've actually already got it sliced. Now, don't try to catch up slicing just yet. I'm going to clear these slices out in just a moment and start all over, but I wanted you to kind of see firsthand on what slices are going to look like. Um, you see that I've got just a basic header up here, a very, very thin header. I've got a navigation bar, even though there's nothing here, I'm going to consider this my nav bar. And then I've got three columns. So two columns worth of content and, and one that I'll put ads on. Now the, there's a few rules with slicing. Um, generally, you want to try to slice in rows. You see here how I've got everything going all the way across. I don't have any instances where I've got you know, like my website, I don't have this graphic where it's real tall and then next to it I've got two thinner, uh, smaller slices. I try to do everything in rows going straight across um, all the way down. And even if you go down here, you know, this here is a, really just a giant row going all the way across. It's just very tall. Now I'm going to clear this out so you can see exactly how I did this. Um, your slice tool is on your uh, toolbar over here in Photoshop. It's generally grouped up with the crop tool. So it'll probably look like the crop tool first. And if you click and hold down, there'll be a slice tool and a slice select there. Now the slice tool is what we use to create the slices, and the slice select is what we use to highlight it or even uh, modify it a little bit. Now the first thing I do with slicing, I start at the, at the top left corner. Okay, there's a few rules about slicing you'll have to learn. Uh, one is that everything gets sliced. You're going to slice everything from top to bottom, left to right. And generally you start at the upper left hand corner. Now anything that is clickable needs to get its own slice. So if I decide that my website, maybe that's going to be a link to get back to my home page. Maybe I'd like to make that clickable. I'll go ahead and slice that out by itself. Um, and again you slice in rows going across. And I'm very, very careful when I'm slicing that I'm not um, making these different heights. You know, if I accidentally made this one too tall, I would see this little imaginary line going up and down the screen. That's a bad thing. That generally means you've got a gap between your slices or that they're not the same height. So if you make them the exact same height, you shouldn't see any of those lines going down. So I've got this whole row done. Even though this big black slice here really doesn't serve a purpose, it's still part of my layout and it's, you know, the rest of my row. Um, I'll do the same thing here. Even though this is just kind of a layout part, I'm going to slice it all the way over to here. And I'm going to slice all the way across. Each one of these buttons is a clickable object, so it deserves its own little slice. Um, I'm going to try to slice kind of between the two and being very careful not to, to overlap these things, trying to make them line up just right. Now you'll also notice up here in the upper left hand corner of each slice there is a number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If it's skipping numbers that means that you've probably got a little bitty tiny slice in between your slices. Sometimes it takes zooming in real close to make sure that they line up. Um, it also may, might help to go up to uh, view and snap so that your snapping is on so it kind of pops itself into place. Now I'm going to do the last row down here. This is going to be the, the tall columns. And I'm going to slice them out accordingly. And this is going to be my add space. So I've got everything sliced out. Everything is all sliced out. Um, you can save and, and close Photoshop, and when you open Photoshop the next time, you will have slices there. They may not show up instantly. You might have to go pull up your slice tool to make them appear, but don't worry if you open Photoshop and you don't see your slices. Now the next step is to um, save this the correct way. And before I save it, I'm going to go to my layers and turn off anything that's not going to be on every page. So if this ad's not going to be on every page, if these words aren't going to be on every page, I absolutely need to get rid of those. So I'm going to go to my layers panel and I'm simply going to hide those things. Everything else it looks like is going to be there. 
So uh, it's important that, that not only do you turn off things that won't be there every time, but you also turn off your text. It's absolutely vital to your website's success that the text is typed out in HTML or pasted into HTML. Um, if you do all of your text as an image, it'll never be found by search engines. Okay, search engines don't really read image on text; they or text on images. Um, search engines only only read real text that's in your code. Um, it also is not going to be available to copy and paste or, or to be highlighted, which is also a big deal. So we always, always, always want to put your text in your actual HTML document, not your image. So I've got this here, got everything turned off, and it's ready to save. To save your slices uh, to your root folder, we're going to go up to File at the top of the screen, File and Save for Web. Now make sure, of course, you do a Save As first and save your PSD. You always, always want to save your PSD. Uh, but when you're ready to save all of these to your root folder, you're going to go to File and Save for Web. Now this is a screen that is made specifically for uh, saving graphics for, for websites. Um, it brings up this giant dialog box that has a ton of options over here and, and shows our slices. And uh, the first thing we want to do before we change anything is to select all of our slices. You can't do uh, Command A or Control A. It doesn't work on this screen, unfortunately. But you can click and drag just a big box through all the slices like this. Um, and that does highlight each slice individually. You can also hold down the shift key on your keyboard and you can click each one individually like that. Um, I'm holding down my space bar for the shortcut to, for the hand tool. You see the, the hand, the grabber there. Um, so you can hold down shift and get each one of them if you want, but um, otherwise you just want to click a, a box around all of them. This is also kind of your last opportunity to make sure that there are no gaps in the numbers. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Remember, if there is a gap, that means you've got a little bitty tiny space between your slices, or you've got um, some overlapping going on. Both of those are big problems. Okay, so you want to make sure you have no gaps in your in your uh, numbers. Now, when you select them all, then you can choose which file format you want. Um, a GIF is probably not going to be in your best interest. If you've got any graphics at all on your site that have gradients or uh, photographs, GIFs aren't really going to be very good. Um, for the most part, we use JPEGs and PNGs at this point. Uh, JPEG, well, let's go back to GIF. If you do want to use GIF, uh, the one property that you can use to decrease the file size is right here at the number of colors. Now, if you look down here along this bottom left, it tells you what the total file size is and how many seconds it would take to download on a 56k modem. I understand we're not really concerned about 56k modems anymore, but it just gives us a reference for how large the files are. If you want to decrease that number, you can decrease the number of colors, uh, say down to 64. I didn't really notice any change here, but I've got a pretty simple layout with not a lot of color. Um, it brought my file size down to 45k, and I can continue on doing that. Eventually, it's going to really degrade your gradients and shadows and just get kind of gross looking overall. So there's a balance there. So like I said, you're probably not going to use GIF anyways. JPEG uh, gives you the quality slider on a scale from 0 to 100. Um, 100 being the highest file size but the best quality. 0 being the lowest quality and lowest file size. And I can see it get kind of grainy. Um, the shadows look real junky. It, it almost looks like it's underwater. So most people can't see the difference between around a 75 uh, to 100. You can't really see a, a whole lot of difference in quality with the naked eye. But uh, the difference is 36K up to 59K. So you can lower the quality considerably, you know, down to 80, and it still looks very, very good with no noticeable problems, and drop that file size down. If you want to do PNGs, um, you can do PNG 8 or PNG 24. Uh, PNG 8 is sort of like a GIF. Um, with Photoshop CS6, you have the opportunity to do transparency with a PNG 8. Typically, you do not until CS6. But you can lower those color numbers and, and it'll drop the file size accordingly. 
Um, you could also do PNG24 that doesn't really give you any options. Uh, this is going to be the absolute best quality, but the absolute highest file size also. If you need transparency, if you need these images to blend with the background of your website, you're going to have to use a PNG no matter what. Uh, some places will tell you, some blogs and books will tell you that you can have transparency with GIFs. It's technically true, but it is bad, bad, bad quality. So um, stick with a JPEG or PNG. For this, I'll go with JPEG 80. I don't have any needs for transparency, and, and that looks like the smallest file size. Um, down at the bottom of this screen, you can hit Save. And then it'll prompt you for where you'd like to save it. Now, obviously, you need to have a, uh, a root folder in place. If you don't have a root folder, now is kind of the time to do that. So I'm going to go up here to my desktop. I've already got a demo folder. And sometimes, uh, as you can see here, it says layout.gif. If it does put .gif, just delete the .gif off the end. That's a, that's a Photoshop bug. It puts it on there if, if you choose GIF first. Um, it's kind of random. doesn't always happen that way, but... I chose JPEG, so there shouldn't be anything about GIF there. Uh, I'm going to hit Save. And I can run out and look in my, uh, in my demo folder real quick. And I can see that it made a folder for me called Images. If I look in there, I see 10 slices, 10 JPEGs, uh, one for each slice. I saved my file as Layout. So it's labeled them layout underscore zero one zero two zero three four five six seven eight nine ten. Each one of these goes with that corresponding slice. So now in my root folder, I've got uh, an images folder that has all of my images ready. I'm ready to run over to my code and, and just insert those. So remember, uh, in quick summary here, when you're slicing in Photoshop. Slice everything, don't leave any gaps between everything, try to slice in rows side by side by side, um, turn off any content that you're not going to see on every page, and certainly turn off all your text, and that gets you ready to start plugging and chugging this into your HTML and CSS code, which will be our next session. So pick up one of your designs and slice away.